Welcome to Roswell United Methodist Church Online. My name is Marian Brown, one of the associate pastors, and this is our on-demand version of the sermon that will be preached on this Sunday morning. And please know that our Sunday services will be live streamed beginning at 9 a.m. for the contemporary service and 11.15 for the traditional service. If you would like to have the entire worship experience on demand, that will be available on Monday morning. We appreciate you being a part of our online community and we invite you to be active and participate through your giving. And so we thank you for your support and your generosity. Before we listen to this Sunday sermon, let's have a moment of prayer. Gracious and holy Lord, we ask that you remind us that wherever we are, we are on holy ground. And so may you help us make space. So may we receive a message that you have for us in this moment. Be in our hearts so that it's open. Be in our ears so that they are open and be a part of our lives so that we are open to receive a challenge and an invitation. Work within us now and all around us so that we may know your presence and we may feel it fully. Through a moment now of words and scripture, speak to us, amen. Let's listen to this Sunday sermon. Good morning. I'm excited to be with you today here at RUMC. I've been Mayfield Minister to Students, and I'm honored to bring the word to you today. The coolest gift I got this year for Christmas was from my dad. Uh, he and I were featured in our local newspaper, the Dahlonega Nugget, and we were featured in the newspaper because we both went and got our doctorates together. So they decided to do an article and they wrote up this whole thing about it. And it was really incredible. Well, my dad took the, the article and cut it out and he framed it. And as a keepsake, he gave me that. And it's a reminder of the process that he and I went together and went together through. That reminds me of the hard work. It reminds me of the, the dedication. It reminds me of those Friday nights or Saturdays where we wanted to go do something else with our friends or family, but we had to instead write a paper or do research. It's also a really strong reminder of the relationship bonding that it had with my dad and I. The relationship of, of he and I going together through this process. And I loved the gift that I received this year. It wasn't something fancy or expensive, but a keepsake. This Advent season is, you know, we just celebrated this past week and this past month was a season of hope, a season of peace, of joy, of love, and to remember the birth of our Savior. And it was an amazing, inspiring, and encouraging season to live in. But oftentimes when we, we enter the new year, we try to do a New Year's resolution. And we had a desire to start something new, but we fall short. I know I have. I don't know if anyone else has ever bought a 12-month membership to a gym, but only used one month. This guy has. Um, I don't know if maybe perhaps uh, you wanted to read the Bible in a year and you made it as far as the book of Genesis. This guy has, right? And sometimes we, we try this New Year resolution of wanting to do something, but we fall short. So I, I, I want to take this season of Advent of hope, love, joy, and peace. And I want to think about how can I take that forward? How can I go, that wasn't just something I celebrated, but it was something that impacted me. And as I go this new year and this new resolution, how do I take that forward and really live that out? And not just for one month, but for the whole year. Because we see the process of 12 months of a gym is a lot different than one month. You know, reading the whole Bible through versus just the first book is a wholly, uh, completely different um, process and, and result than if you just do it for one month. So we take this Advent and we go, all right, Ben, I'm with you. I want to do it for a whole year. And, and, and what does that take and what does that look like? 
Well, this new year, we're going to take some next steps together. And those steps are going to be steps towards growth and a close relationship to God. And that relationship is really seen in Luke chapter 2, verses 22 through 40. When the time came for the purification rites required by the law of Moses, Joseph and Mary took him to Jerusalem to present him to the Lord. And as written in the law of the Lord, every firstborn male is to be consecrated to the Lord. And to offer a sacrifice in keeping with what is said in the law of the Lord, a pair of doves or two young pigeons. Now there was a man in Jerusalem called Simeon, who was righteous and devout. He was waiting for the consolation of Israel, and the Holy Spirit was on him. It had been revealed to him by the Holy Spirit that he would not die before he had seen the Lord's Messiah. Moved by the Spirit, he went into the temple courts when the parents brought in the child, Jesus, to do for him what the custom of the law required. Simeon took him in his arms and praised God, saying, Sovereign Lord, as you have promised, you may now dismiss your servant in peace. For my eyes have seen your salvation, which you have prepared in the sight of all nations, a light for revelation to the Gentiles and the glory of your people, Israel. The children's father and mother marveled at what was said about him. Then Simeon blessed them and said to Mary, his mother, This child is destined to cause the falling and rising of many in Israel and to be a sign of that will be spoken against so that the thoughts of many hearts will be revealed and a sword will pierce your own soul too. There was also a prophet Anna, the daughter of Penuel, the tribe of Asher. She was very old and she had lived with her husband seven years after her marriage. And then was a widow until she was 84 years old. She never left the temple, but worshiped night and day, fasting and praying. Coming up to them at that very moment, she gave thanks to God and spoke about the child to all who were looking forward to the redemption of Jerusalem. When Joseph and Mary had done everything required by the law of the Lord, they returned to Galilee to their own town of Nazareth. And the child grew and became strong. He was filled with wisdom and the grace of God was on him. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. When I first read this scripture, it took me a while. You know, I don't know how you feel when you read scripture, but it takes me a couple dozen times to really truly understand what God may be speaking to me uh, in that moment. And I know sometimes too, when I reread the word, depending on what season of life I am, the scripture speaks differently. And so when I was reading the scripture and I was trying to understand really what God was having me, um, having on my heart and how to move forward with this scripture, the word focus jumped out to me. And there's four main parts of this story, and each part is focused on God. So the first part, Joseph and Mary, wonderful parents. And they didn't have a lot um, to offer, but they offered uh, what they had. And this is only a week or so after the birth of Jesus. And I think about Joseph and Mary, they're entering uncharted territory. They're entering a moment in their life where they don't know exactly what's going to happen. I know being a parent is difficult, but could you imagine being the parent of the Savior and the Messiah? Probably a little bit of extra pressure, right? And they're entering uncharted territory. But no matter what, they were focused on God. They were doing what was required to them. They were blessed by people that they came across, but they were focused on God. And, and I think as we enter this next season of life in 2024, there may be some uncharted territory. There may be some waters that are, are difficult, a storm that is a brewing that can be scary. The unknown is terrifying. But as long as we're focused on God, and know that God is with us every step of the way. And I love how is, he's with us every step, not just every leap, not every milestone or every jump. He's with us every single step of the way. There's this, there's this understanding of he's with us every step of the way, that there's a moment of healing, that there's a moment of growth. There's a moment of, of when we're unsure that we can lean onto God, that we can trust and have faith 
that God's going to provide in ways that we don't understand, that the love that he has for us is so unconditional and so beautiful and so pure. So I hope no matter what uncharted territory that we can be like Joseph and Mary and focus on God and know that he is with us each step of the way. The second part that I run into is, is Simeon. When starting with verse 27, he says he was moved by the Spirit and he went into the temple courts. He was moved by the Spirit. So to me, that's a divine appointment. He wasn't planning on that day going, hey, I'm going to go to the temple. I hope I run into the Jesus, the Messiah and the Savior. But yet he was moved by the Spirit and he listened to that Spirit and he was obedient to that, to that movement and went to where he was needed to give that reassurance to Joseph and Mary. I think these next steps we take and, you know, we want to live it out throughout the whole year, but how can we be obedient to God's will? When God plays something onto our life and we hear the voice of God, how do we go, all right, let me work around it versus going, let me listen to what you have to say and let's work through it together. Being obedient to God is giving God control of our life is recognizing that we can't control every aspect. We can't control every person. What we can control is our relationship with the Lord and saying, God, I want to be obedient to your will. And I want to listen to the voice of you, God. Not the voice of myself, not the voice of others, but your voice. And through this, our relationship is going to grow. So God may be placing in your life a little chirp, a little voice saying, hey, maybe I need you to do this. And we may not see why that benefits. We may not see why that is beneficial to what, what is this outcome going to be. But God could be using us in powerful ways, just like he was using um, Simeon here to go out and speak life into Joseph and to Mary. So we see that we got to be obedient. We know that we have to uh, know that God is with us in uncharted territory. But then we enter part three, and I love part three which is Anna, right? She is 84 years old, right? Or should I say 84 years young? And she is rocking it, right? Here's someone who is devoted to God no matter the situation. Anna's going through a tough time. There's no doubt about it. She's widowed, right? She's lost her husband. And instead of living into this misery or living into the hardship or living into just the pain, she goes, you know what? I'm going to take that struggle, that pain, that grief that I'm living in, and I'm actually going to go and be in the temple. I'm going to devote myself to God, and perhaps that devotion to God can actually help others, help give wisdom and love and, and, and give it to other people in ways that are powerful. I love Anna. She is an incredible woman. And so she goes and she devotes herself. And I think what we can take from her in this scripture is no matter what difficult situation you may be in or hardship that you are going to face in these next steps, is remain focused on God and God will use you in powerful ways. I often think about uh, people in my own life when I was in difficult situations and I'm afraid of like, should I tell them, you know, what's going on? I might be embarrassed or I might have shame or guilt of what I've done or what I said or, or whatever relationship may be, you know, um, hurting or in pain or struggling. And I go, there's people I know God has placed in my life that will speak life into me, that will encourage me. People who are like Anna. And so I hope we can take that and go, man, even in the hardships, I can still focus on God. Now, the fourth part of this story, the, the fourth kind of narrative that you're like, all right, Ben, I get it. There's Joseph, Mary, there's Simeon, there's Anna, but who is the fourth person? Anybody know? Do you know? It's Luke, the author of the book. This is from Luke's perspective, and Luke is writing this. And Luke uses a lot of things that he wants us to really focus on. The, this is it. At the center of this is the child, Jesus Christ. He's mentioned by name only once in verse 27. Elsewhere, he's referred to always as the child. Substantial words spoken about someone so very small, 
but Luke has been playing on this contrast throughout the entire birth story that we've been learning and reading about. The Savior of the world is born in a stable, while another Savior of the world, uh, i.e. Caesar, sits on a throne in Roman splendor. In striking contrast, Jesus' parents bring the offering designated for the poor, the two turtle doves. And it's this child, born in poverty, who is the true Savior. He is a sign of God's consolation and redemption. We are left in anticipation to watch as the child grows, as it says at the end of the scripture that he will be filled with wisdom and blessed with the favor of God. Luke has us focused on consolation and redemption. See, the consolation is this comfort for those who may be suffering, that our Savior is born and we can focus on the King. I don't know who may be suffering, who may be struggling, who may be entering the new year knowing it's going to be different than the year previously. That the life is going to be a different situation. That the next steps we take, the new year resolution that we take is going to look different. But Jesus brings in this comfort saying, hey, I am with you through it all. And it's through a Savior that is born that brings this comfort. It comes from a place of poverty, a place that is unexpected. He didn't rule with power and might. He ruled with love and grace. And that love and grace brings us comfort. And we're in the season of whatever, whether it's joyous moments or, or moments of, of struggle or strife, whatever it may be, Jesus is in that moment with us to bring us comfort to bring us love in a pure way that is just unconditional. The other one that Luke really focuses on is the word redemption that Jesus brings. And I love this because our sinful debt has been paid. We are sinful. We're all sinful. But God loves us so much that he gave his only begotten son for us to redeem us, to make us new. And even the darkest moments and the hardest struggles, we are never beyond God's redemption. Through Christ's sacrifice on the cross, we have been given a new life, a life free from sin and from pain and overflowing with joy and blessing. In 2024, this new year and these next steps, let's turn every obstacle that we face into an opportunity, an opportunity to focus on God, to focus on hope that only God can bring. Focus during the storms of life and the storms and the struggles, and let's focus on the peace and the calmness that only God can bring. When we are faced with sorrow and burdens, we ask God to grant us the ability to focus on the joy that only he can bring. With all the anger and division in this world that we face, the divisiveness of the, of the words that people say and, and, and all over, from our homes, from our communities, from our country to our world, all the divisiveness and the anger and the hurt that is in this world, let us focus on the love that the birth of our Savior brought. And let that hope, peace, joy, and love change the way that we move forward, the next steps that we take. And let us not lose focus on our Savior to be a vessel of love that shines through. Each step we take, God is with us, growing closer in relationship. So no matter where you're stepping towards, no matter what resolution you have, no matter which way you want to grow, let's focus on God each step of the way. Let us pray. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you for this time. We thank you for this opportunity just to gather God, to to learn about you and to, to hear the word, the scripture, God, that there's these moments where there are hardships facing us. There's struggle. There's, 
joyous moments. There's wonderful moments. There's these all sorts of, of different seasons of life that people are in. But no matter what season we are in, no matter what obstacle is in front of us, it can become an opportunity to receive your love, an opportunity to grow in relationship with you, an opportunity to focus on you, God. And God, the season of Advent that, that we just had where we, we, we talk about the birth of your son who brought in this hope that is just so beautiful and pure, this peace that is needed within us and peace in our communities and, and the lives that we live. The joy that is just, just so, just incredibly impactful. And the love that changed everything. Let us take those with us as we move forward into this new year. Don't let this be something we celebrated, past tense, but let it be every step of the way how we move forward. And as we hear from the, the Joseph and Mary and, and Simeon and Anna, how they focused on you, God, no matter what it may have been. Let us be creatures who are focused on you and allow ourselves to grow to be vessels, vessels that, that you pour through and we can shine into the others in our life till we can remind others that they are loved, that they are valued and they are known by a heavenly father who cares so much about them. God, we love you and we look forward to taking these next steps with you in this new year. Amen. Thank you so much for joining us online. It is a blessing to have the gift of technology to have sermon this way. We thank you for participating. And just a reminder, if you want to see the live services, 9 a.m. on Sunday for contemporary and 1115 Sunday morning for traditional services. And always we will have the full on-demand worship experience on Monday morning. And if there's ever a time that you would like to join us here at the physical location, we're located at 814 Mimosa Boulevard, Roswell, Georgia. We want to be connected with you. If you have a prayer request, please let us know by emailing pray at rumc.com. And we would love for you to be a part of our ministry through your giving. If you would like to support our campus and our ministries, you can do so at rumc.com slash give. And now hear these words of a benediction. Love without fear, serve with commitment. And in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, go in peace. Amen.